Welcome to the Highland Heights Sunday morning Bible class. We are glad that you are joining us today for this conversation. Uh, we have been going through the Ten Commandments, those original rules given to God's people as they are coming out of Egypt, as God is establishing his people. And likewise, as God continues to establish us as Christians, as his people, we continue to uh, look to those rules, uh, those laws for, for guidance. So um, we are entering into uh, the, the second half of the Ten Commandments. We're going to be talking about number six tonight, uh, do not murder. Uh, the second half of the commandments are direct commandments, right? Uh, they are commandments for individuals to, to uh, refrain from doing specific items. So uh, that's kind of the theme going forward. Um, so uh, Jeremy, it's a, it's a pretty big one for us to start off with, uh, almost basic, we could say, don't murder. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what should we think about that? Well, uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's fairly simple. Uh, you shall not murder. I mean, you know, don't kill people. Uh, you know, that's probably the way we've always heard it. And, you know, by all means do not kill people. Um, but there's, there are some things. Well Go ahead. Sorry, just to interrupt you real quick right there. Uh, there's, there's actually a difference in translation. Um, the King James Version says, do not kill, thou, thou shalt not kill, right. whereas most translations say, thou shalt not murder. Right. So there is a bit of a difference, and, and we, can, we can get into that later, and I, I think you're, you're going there yourself. So, Yeah, the, the, I, one of the things that, that's caught up in the Hebrew word is not just what we would consider first-degree murder. Um, one of the things I take my government class through sometimes when we're talking about due process and law enforcement and, and protections and prosecutions and things like that is there are actually different degrees of crimes um, within the criminal code. And, and you know, and right. one of the rules of prosecution is don't overcharge because you may not be able to prove, you know, that charge. Okay. Um, and so when we think of murder, we're thinking of the purposeful taking of a life. Um, but also included in this Hebrew word is things like negligence and carelessness. Okay. Now, when we when we say that, we're not referring to what we legally today would consider manslaughter, which would be the accidental taking of human life. Um, that's actually covered um, on, in another section of the law, um, the sanctuary city laws. And you know, if you committed mm -hmm. manslaughter, you could run to the sanctuary city, and you were safe from retribution by the family of the person you accidentally offed, and things like that. Okay. But this one, what's built into this then? Okay, and, and it seems pretty simple, and and we're we're getting into those commandments about how we treat other people. Sometimes you'll hear it described as one through four it, commandments. One through four is a vertical relationship, and five through ten is a horizontal relationship. How we treat God, how we treat each other, and this is, I mean, this is pretty basic. <laughs> you know, one of the, perhaps the most basic way to treat other people correctly is don't kill them. So so we're done, right? Not quite. Okay, so let's let's think about when we include this idea of negligent homicide. Okay, ne killing someone, ending someone's life, causing death through carelessness or negligence. What are we talking about? Well, negligent homicide is usually um, defined in some way that different states will have different ways of phrasing it. But the general consensus is a person who, through criminal negligence, allows another person to die. In other words, it's a situation where you, and not to get into all the legal nuts and bolts because I'm not a lawyer, um, but it's a situation where you did something that was, you knowingly did something negligent and it ended someone's life. Um, a classic example is drunk driving. <laughs> you know you shouldn't get behind the wheel of a car and drive um in an impaired state because you won't have the re you won't have the reflexes or you'll do something foolish and that'll have repercussions okay what does that say when when we behave with negligence though what does that say about how we value other people okay you know we tend to be very careful with our own lives most people are um you do have crazy people who like bungee jump and jump out of airplanes but you know most people um are are very careful with our own lives are we careful with other people's lives? You know, you, you think about it, you know, when <laughs> when you're driving your children around, are you more careful when you're you're driving your children? Okay. Um, because you know, you've got this precious cargo, right? And so you're you want to be very, very careful with with this cargo, especially when they're very young, right? So 
the reason that negligence is considered criminal, the reason we have negligent homicide, the reason that would be considered in would be considered in this commandment is it's a disregard for others. Okay. It's engaging in a behavior and in that threatens someone's life, even if we're not doing it to threaten someone's life, we're not real careful about how we treat other people. And that's, that's at the core, not only of this commandment, but of, of commandment six through 10. Okay. But especially this commandment, when we look at other people, what do we see? How do we treat them? How do we interact with them? Do we see them as fellow human beings, or we do we see them as rungs on the ladder of success? Do we see them as someone we should treat as carefully as we would want others to treat ourselves? Hey, love your neighbor as yourself. Or do we view ourselves as more important than other people? And thus, we're careful with our lives, but we don't have to be careful with their lives, really. So that's, that's kind of the core of, of, of where this is coming from is, how do we treat other people and how do we view other people? Mm -hmm. So it, it's interesting that we are having this conversation right now. Um, there, there could not be a more current uh, in, important commandment for us to look at. One of the reasons why we're having this class on YouTube and not in person is because we are trying to protect the lives of the vulnerable. And um, as you know, uh, I hope that this video is out of date in just a few months or even sooner. It'd be really nice. But um, you know, in the time of COVID, when you are unaware if you are sick for a certain number of days and you can easily pass on a disease, uh, if you are not careful, right, if you do not use proper caution, proper care in order to uh, protect others, um, no, one has, no one has the idea, uh, no one has the intent of, of, of pushing harm on someone else, but that might be what happens, right? So, so that's the negligence that we're talking about, actually showing care for the lives of others. Um, the, the, the elders at Highland ha have done a, a wonderful job, I, I think, of, of weighing those risks, of, of, of yes, realizing that all we want to do as God's family is be together, while at the same time, we also have to realize that um, there is a proper amount of care, just, just um, I, would, I wouldn't call it basic, but uh, just a, a, a proper amount of caution that has to be shown. Now, pushing this to the side, I, I think this, this goes along with the way that we, that we treat other people around us. Um, we aren't reckless. Uh, we do value the lives of all people. Uh, from from conception till death, uh, we we are we are for life along the entire way. I think sometimes Christians get a bad name because we we only seem to get up in arms about um, about life at the very beginning. Um, per, perhaps it's because we're offended by the way it's currently treated, but hopefully we are uh, we are seeking to save life as much as possible throughout all of life. Um, Jeremy, let me. Let me take us in a different direction. I'm, I'm wanting, because uh, I'm not sure where, where we would talk about this, uh, but that difference between mur thou shalt not murder and thou shalt not kill, which I would, I would put forward, the Bible does not say that, uh, because it would be kind of weird for God to say thou shalt not kill, and then a few chapters later saying, uh, you know, uh, you need to go to war with these people. So how do we think about... Um, this difference how can we how is there one god this one god that says thou shalt not murder and at the same time says go and kill these people well that's there's a lot to unpack in that question um there's okay one uh you're absolutely right there is there is a difference and we want to make sure that, that we highlight the difference here between things like military service or um or you know actions um actions that would not be considered murder okay but do have the effect of ending human life okay um got the the law has several um option or several um crimes that lead to capital punishment as well okay so there's there's two forms of what we today would call state sanctioned killing that yeah. are included in the law okay 
the issue here though is one of justice okay um Mm -hmm. that is is really i think where where this this where we can start to see the difference between these two okay um and by the way one interesting thing um today the phrase eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth okay which you find in the old law you find it in other old laws um in the ancient world as well um and that is often pulled out of the old law to say look at how brutal the old law was it's an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth and um i saw a tv show this has been several years ago now um it was an episode of of ncis okay and it was back when denozo was actually funny so it must have been like fourth or fifth season um but he the uh the son of of the victim whose death murder they're investigating um says you know i want to go get the people that 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 killed my dad i mean you know eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth and denozo said well that just leaves a bunch of blind toothless people and the way that young man was using that phrase he's absolutely right what we forget is eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth is actually a limiting principle in the old law it's a justice thing it's a way to prevent kind of a hatfield and mccoy escalation of you know you hit me i'm gonna hit you back twice as hard Okay. Oh, well, uh, you, you committed manslaughter. We're going to kill you. You know, our family's going to get there. We're going to kill you and your whole family. Well, now your clan's mad because our clan, you know, our family killed you and your clan's coming after my family. And my clan's coming after yours. And it blows up into a big mess because what, what it, what I for an eye and tooth for a tooth says is if someone does something that causes you to lose your eye, they lose their eye. You don't get to kill them for that. Okay. And in that, we see the idea of justice, the idea of balance, okay? So what we're looking at here is God has created systems of justice. You know, when God says, go to war against these people, okay, go to war against those people. I mean, it's command from God, right? When God says, this is a crime punishable by death, it's a crime punishable by death, but that's God's call. That's not our call. Okay. And when we go and you think about the things that that lead to the attitude that leads to murder. Okay. Um, this is what Jesus is referencing in Matthew chapter five. Okay. Um, Jesus says, you've heard that it was said, you shall not murder. I say to you, anyone who hates his brother has committed murder in his heart. Okay. This is not when Jesus says, hey, there, he's not thinking of man, what that guy did really annoys me. He's talking about a heart attitude. He's talking about an attitude that said, well, you ever heard someone say, maybe, um, I hope not, but if you've ever heard someone say, boy, I tell you what, if I weren't a Christian, what I'd do to them? Okay, there's an attitude issue there, okay? Um, and, and look, does hate, do hatred and murder have different outcomes? Yes. I mean, if those are the only two options, please hate me, please don't murder me, Okay. Um, you know, I, I would prefer you hate me than don't murder me. But, but you think about the things that lead to hatred, anger. And what's interesting is anger is a secondary emotion. Ang- we're angry because of something else. We're sad. We're grieved. Mi- a misunderstanding. Okay. A lot of people get angry because of a misunderstanding and that leads to hatred, fear. Okay. And I, I don't want this to turn into, you know, Star Wars, anger leads to hate, hate lead, fear leads to hate, hate leads to the dark side. Okay. But in a way, it does kind of lead to a dark place, okay? And what Jesus is saying in Matthew 5 is, don't even go near the attitude that would lead you to want to kill someone. Yeah, it, I would prefer Jesus like, okay, yeah, don't murder them, okay? But also, don't have the attitude that would lead you to hurt, to murder someone. Because once you've done that, your heart has already left where God wants it to be. Now, how do we avoid that? Well, think about it for a second. If we're misunderstood or we're involved in a misunderstanding or a dispute with someone, would we want them to behave with a certain sense of graciousness towards us? Yeah, I think so. Okay, what does the golden rule say? Treat others as you wish to be treated. How would we like to be treated by others? And again, this is a personal, you know, we're not we're not talking about the state there's a whole there's other rules that govern what the state can and cannot and should and should not do um this is about our heart and how our heart responds to other people and how we think about other people and the golden rule love your neighbor as yourself both of those involve the idea of okay 
if the situation were flipped, how would I want to be treated? Mm -hmm. Treat others like that. Don't treat them the way they treated you. Treat them the way you wish, the way you wish they would treat you if you were in their position. Yeah. So, so let me, uh, several good things you said there and, and uh, several reactions on my part. Uh, earlier in what you were saying about uh, retribution, you know, the, the escalating conflicts that, that often arise, I, I, that always leads me back to thinking about something that um, Miroslav Volf, best name ever, uh, that, that he said, um, and basically um, sh shortening it down, talk, he, he talked about how um, for societies that have been in conflict, um, the, uh, the justice of God is necessary. Right. In order in order for them to not continue to escalate conflict, they need God to be a vengeful God. They, they need to know that God will eventually make things right. And uh, Wolf says that it's usually Western Christians who have never had conflict in their life, who have never you know, lived in a war torn country that say, oh, you know, we live uh, we love a peaceful God and kind of end it there. Yes, we serve a peaceful God, but we also serve a God that does serve justice to the world. Um, and, and when you've been in a place where you have to hold back and you have to say, this is not mine, I, 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 this person deserves to die, but I, I'm giving this over to God, um, that requires a trust in God that I honestly, um, I don't know. Uh, what would happen? What would happen in my own life? Because I've never experienced it. I've never had to deal with anything like that. So there's that. Um, another thing, Jeremy. I don't think we disagree on this, but but I want to kind of uh, go through this. Um, I, I think that when we go to the golden rule, uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto do unto you. Um, it's we often go there because that's actually a place where we agree with the secular world, right? It, it's funny as we're as we're going through the Ten Commandments, uh, when you get to you know Commandment five, it, it definitely by six, six and down, we all tend to agree on those things because essentially we're getting into property uh, later on, but first we're getting into the property of our own life, and it's a utilitarian idea, but basically meaning that um, if if we if we ignore God. Then it's really easy to say that. Well, at least let's not harm each other. You know, the, the do no harm principle. Um, but at the same time, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you is not a sufficient claim. You know, from a utilitarian perspective, when Jesus says it, when Jeremy says it, you're doing it because God has said. You know, that God backs up the claim, right? Um, but when God offers the sixth commandment. He is not there. There's no. There's no. Uh, you know, because that follows. It's do not do it. The, the commandment suffices on its own to be the reason why we shouldn't do it. Um, I, doing some reading on this, they pointed out. You know, there are religions uh, where um, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Well, sometimes people uh, want to kill other people, and they'll kill themselves in the process, right? Um, we we think you know. Sadly, we know about this too much. Suicide bombings. Uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Well, if you want to kill someone and you don't mind dying in the process, it defeats the purpose, right? Um, in order to, uh, in order to repress my own sinful desires to hate, uh, it, and if that ever grew into a desire to murder, I need a steadfast rule that comes directly down from God. Now. I guess at this point we say pause the video, go back to the the last series we did on you know the you know the uh, reason for God, reason for faith, and talking about uh, how God is the ultimate source of morality. Without Him, we have no other. And I, I think that that's most apparent here uh, that all of Western society, all all of the ideas that we have as a, a, a people that respect each other, only find. Um, only find truth in in them being handed down from God. Without that, they are without merit. And so, um, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, 
is only true because Jesus said it, because God has given us the commands that tell us how we should want to be treated. Otherwise, these are empty claims of, well, I guess I feel this way today. Anyway, um, long tangent there ju just to say that um, if, if we don't live by the rule of God, uh, it's survival of the fittest and murder is all of a sudden okay. Whereas, as, as we've talked about in previous classes, um, having the command from God is essential to uh, establishing the way we would want to be treated. So I'll, I'll end there. Well, I think I think you're right um, with with the idea that um, okay, from a strictly utilitarian standpoint, um, thou and, and once again, utilitarian meaning yeah. that it, we want to have the most happiness and the least amount of pain in the world. That's that's the one standard. Uh, Christian or non-Christian, that's that's the one standard. Yeah. Exactly, and and what's interesting is that standard is is really really good when it benefits us, but it when you remove God from the picture, it breaks down. Okay, mm -hmm. um, really quickly, um, and you think about it, the the commands, um, you know, six through ten, are very very good for keeping an orderly society as long as everybody's willing to play by the rules and you don't get someone who doesn't who does you don't get have someone who doesn't play by the rules and then goes unpunished for it okay there's no consequences right um and so you know look you shall not murder is going to break down really quickly okay um and what's interesting is that even within the jewish system okay um, and we've talked about, you know, they go to war and capital punishment. There were, they were circumscribed in how they could do that and where they could do that and what they could do. And you think about Ahab, um, King Ahab after Naboth is stoned so that Ahab can steal his vineyard. In other societies, the king probably would have gotten away with that. A king like Ahab might not have because he was frankly a weak king, but a strong king's probably going to get away with it, okay? Might makes right, yeah. Exactly, might makes right, whereas in Israel, Ahab doesn't get away with it, okay? There's somebody who calls him out, saying that David, uh, David's moment, his the greatest sin we talk about with David, there's someone there calling him out, okay? Um so the system sounds good, you know, let's just treat everybody fair, and it works well, and it can even work well within a community, but it, when that community binds together, okay, they're going to look outside the community and say, they're a threat to us, they aren't worthy of the same protections, okay? Where this command differs from that kind of strict, what is the usefulness of this, how does this help us live and have, quote unquote, the best life and of course different people have different opinions of best life so who gets to determine what is and is not the best life um where this command differs is this command is rooted in creation okay this command is rooted and the way christians view life and and just the one quibble i would say christians um christians care about life from conception until after death because we care about what happens to you after you die too Otherwise, that's, we wouldn't. That's a fair quibble. It is a different type of life, but okay. Yeah, but it's still, I mean, hey, continuation of existence here um, into eternity. Okay, so we care about all of that. And it's not grounded in, okay, this is a good way to keep the nation of Israel from self destructing. It's grounded in, this is wrong. Well, what makes it wrong? What makes it wrong is if you go all the way back to Genesis 1, we're created in the image of God. I felt like it's been a few weeks since we brought this hobby horse up, so we need to bring it up again. But because it's so important, okay? Human life is special. Why do we get, you talked about how Christians sometimes, and, and sometimes I think it is a critique that we do need to pay a little bit more attention to, we get all hepped up about life before birth and then after birth, you know, anyway, um, you know, we, we need to make sure that we are extending that care on through until, as I said, after death, um, all the way across the spectrum, okay? But the reason we get so upset by that is we are coming at it not from a utilitarian standpoint. We are coming at it not from a 
this this life is how is this life valued is this life valued by its convenience to me or is this life valued in and of itself okay yes. in that is the root of this commandment what makes life valuable god knelt in the dust and breathed the spirit of life into man in his image god created him that is what mm -hmm. makes life valuable and and you think about it that touch is not only do we protect other people's lives, as we'll see it, such as do we protect other people's relationships? Do we protect other people's stuff? Do we protect our own character and other people's character? Do we protect the attitude that does that? Do we have the attitude that views people as being made in the image of God? Okay, that's tough. That's the 10th commandment. Okay. So it touches all of those things, but it also touches how we treat people. You know, we're, one of the big concerns in America today is tribalism and how, you know, we're, we're kind of divided into tribes and we all kind of retreat into our own little echo chambers, okay? And everybody on the other side is not just, quote unquote, wrong, but bad, Okay. Lo the idea of loving your enemies comes from this idea too and loving your enemies means they may be my opponent they may be my enemy but they are still made in the image of god and god loves them and i'm called to see the world through the eyes of god so i'm going to love them too well but they don't they don't love me okay that's not relevant to the conversation there's no they started it clause and in here, mm, this yeah. we're called on to love people the way God did. And how did God love us? Well, scarcely for a righteous man will someone dare to die. However, for a righteous man, someone might dare to die. But God showed his own love for, for us in this. While we were yet sinners, God sent his son to die for the ungodly. That's the view of, that's how we're supposed to view the world. And that is where that's kind of the, the foundational underpinning behind this commandment is love your neighbor as yourself. It means you see your neighbor the way God sees them. We are running up against time. So um, as we're, we're thinking about the implications that this commandment has for us, uh, I'm imagining that most of the people that are participating in this conversation have not murdered. Good job. Uh, good job, Jeremy. Good job, me. We're well good, done. right? Most of, us are, most of us are good. So keep doing that. But yeah. uh, Jeremy, what's, what's the other closing thought? How do we as, as Christians uh, bring this commandment into our lives? And how does it, uh, you've already given us many good practical things to think about, but what's another way that we, uh, that we bring it in and we, 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 uh, we fold this into the way that we act every day? Well, I think about this, when, when someone is killed or murdered or negligent homicided, negligent homicided, anyway, um, <laughs> we're creating verbs now, um, or when we hate someone, yeah. who are we ultimately disrespecting and whose place is justice? And it's funny, um, you were talking earlier about, um, about trusting in God to take care of things when people wrong us. And I thought immediately of Romans 12, where uh, God says, um, beloved, never avenge, well, Paul, God says to Paul, beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, mm -hmm. if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heat burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Whose responsibility is justice? It's God's. Okay. So leave it in God's hands. Okay. Because in leaving it in God's hands, in not treating someone, the way that they are expecting that's going to make them ask why now is that always going to lead them to faith probably not there will be times it won't work out that way but if it leads one soul to say now wait a minute what's different about that person then it's worth turning the other cheek because they're made in the image of god just like we are
Uh, well said, and, and I will echo in another way uh, things that you've already said. Um, the way that we react to this commandment is, as Jesus said, that, that the, the logical conclusion that we draw from this is that we love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. Um, I'll admit, I don't do that as often as I should, probably because I tell myself that I don't have any enemies. I'm, I'm not going to war with anybody. Um, I, I think we have to be honest with ourselves and, and in some, I hate to say this, but you have to be creative, right? You, you have to think a little bigger. Uh, probably one of the reasons I don't have any enemies is because I don't talk to people that disagree with me. I don't go out of my way to, uh, have conversations with those. Maybe I mute someone on Facebook or I block them or I unfriend them and, and I remove them from my life. Right. And so therefore, I don't have any, any enemies anymore. Lucky me. No, that's actually the wrong way to react to to someone that you disagree with, to someone that you find their views reprehensible. No, God tells us to love that person. And uh, you know, we've heard it said love's a verb. Love is something you do. It's not just a, an abstract thought. It, it, it requires a relationship with the person to love them and to pray for them. Uh, and that's the most powerful thing that we can do. Uh, we're not just the opposite extreme of do not of murdering someone. So to do to not do that is to pray for them and to invite them through prayer into a relationship with God. And that's that's where we're trying to go to bring all people to God. So, uh, Jeremy, I, I enjoyed this conversation. I, I thought. Uh, some gave me some things to think about uh, this week. Uh, we appreciate everyone that has joined this conversation. As we say every single week, we hope that we are able to do this in person as soon as possible. But until then, we'll be here on uh, Sunday mornings for our Bible classes. Uh, until the next time, have a good week.